I've been seeing comments telling me that people are getting FSR 4 running in games that don't support it and aren't even FSR 3.1 like Cyberpunk, which is really exciting. And here's a video showing FSR 3 and then FSR 4. Look at the instability on this grass with FSR 3. It looks absolutely rock solid in FSR 4. You can see some more shots here. I'm not gonna show you everything that's in this video because it's not my video. And I will link the source in the video description. This appears to be a very small channel. Looks like 14 subscribers, BNCH Bench. Anyway, source linked in the video description. And I was seeking this out because I was curious what these comments have been talking about. They've been mentioning something called Optiscaler. So I was like, has anybody tested this out? Is this actually working? And I found this video, it looks like it's actually working. Awesome, so what's going on here? And to be clear, today's video is a news video. So this is my main topic in today's news video. We'll have more topics as well. You can search the timestamps if, if you wanna to jump to the other topics, but this isn't my independent analysis of this, but I am gonna give you all the sources and the general idea of how this works. I would love to cover this in a dedicated video in the future. I don't have time to get to that today, but I figured some of you would be very interested in this news. Anyway. So you go to GitHub to get the OptiScaler download, and we'll talk a little bit about how you get it to work in just a second, but what does it even do? Because it actually does more than just inject FSR4 into unsupported games. This is much bigger than that. This is really cool. So what it looks like this does is it takes any game that either has DLSS, XESS, or FSR, and then it, it's not just a simple DLL swap the way some other, uh, you know, like the, the way some other you know, versions of DLSS get changed, for example. This is not that. Uh, this is intercepting these inputs that are being sent to those upscalers and then running it through Optiscaler to then output the correct output uh, in, in, into these pathways. And you can inject it into the latest versions of these including FSR4. That's really cool. So also this goes beyond that because they can also insert frame generation into games that don't support it, but not in the way tools like lossless scaling does where it just takes the output image and does frame interpolation or even the way that Nvidia's like smooth motion does at the driver level or AMD's AFMF at the driver level. That's not what this is doing. It's again, taking your DLSS, XDSS and FSR inputs and running it through an Opti FG uh, to, uh, in DX12 games and apparently only some of them have a HUD fix available, but then outputting FSR frame generation. Interesting, again, that way it would be actually taking the game inputs. The game inputs have things like motion vectors that the uh, frame generators that, that are just taking the output image of the game when a game is not supported don't have access to. So it gives it access to game data rather than just running it on the top of the output image. Really interesting. Also, they have some latency reduction ability to take games that have reflex support and run it through apparently fake Michaos, apologies if I'm mispronouncing that, or fake uh, NVAPI to switch into Anti-Leg 2 or Latency Flex. I'm not quite sure what Latency Flex is, haven't heard of that one before, but there you go. Now this is really cool, again, because this is not running on the top of the game, this is taking the game's inputs and switching over, it, it, running it through the correct process to get the outputs that you want. Really cool. But again, this is uh, modifying game files. So if you are in a multiplayer game or any game that runs some kind of anti-cheat, I would not recommend trying this out because it's possible that you would get flagged for modifying game files as a cheat and get banned. So careful with that. Also, there seems to be a game support list um, of 22 games currently for switching FSR4 uh, switching into FSR4. Now that's really cool because AMD's official support list uh, as of the time of launching RDNA 4 GPUs is only about 35 games with the promise of a bunch more coming. But this uh, immediately, it doesn't quite double, but, but a major increase to the number of supported games, although again, through this unofficial source. Now you can take a look at the games list here, but there are some big ones here. Uh, like Baldur's Gate 3, although they did test it out and say arguably not worth due to the lower performance than... Uh, uh, anyway, so there's some uh, caveats on some of these, but they're saying, again, Black Myth Wukong support. Interesting stuff. Now, does it, uh, does it really work and how, does it, how do you get it to work? So again, 
seen videos showing that it actually works. This is not my independent analysis on it. How you get it is you go to this GitHub page and you download the latest build and there are some instructions on how to install this and add it to games. If you'd like that in video format, again, this is not my full independent video on it, uh, but there is a source here, which I'm linking an article that has this source because as of my time of filming, uh, Twitter or X seems to be down right now. I think it's under some sort of cyber attack. I didn't really read all the news on that, uh, but this source is there and uh, it's linked to from this article. So that should work. And it has a video that shows the step-by-step -step process of getting FSR4 to work. Now keep in mind, you still need an RDNA 4 GPU to run FSR4. So if you're hoping this lets you run FSR4 on like a 7000 series or 6000 series GPU or whatever, that is not the case. That is not what this is doing. Anyway, good step-by-step -step video on how to do it here. A good side-by-side -side comparisons showing that it is indeed actually working. And um, as far as the overall uh, interface, once you do get it installed and there is some modification of game files that's required to get it up and running, uh, in the game you want it to work in, you get this uh, interface where you can then get it to work by switching it over here. Now I actually wanna show you this scene, that's the last bit of this I'll show you, because look at how flickery this mess is right here. And watch when they switch over to FSR4, boom, it is rock solid. So, looks like it has a good interface, looks like it's absolutely working. Again, source for the side-by-side -side comparisons in the video description, the GitHub in the video description, and uh, this article from WCF CCF Tech, which links to a good video explaining the step-by-step -step process of how to insert OptiScaler into FSR, uh, sorry, into Cyberpunk with FSR4 support. So really cool stuff. Now, I do have some other uh, news topics to talk about today. One of them is 50 series leaks. So Copite 7 Kimmy had been quiet for a little bit after we had the 50 series launch because his main thing is linking 50 series GPU specs. Uh, he's been on a series of tweets lately. I'm showing it to you here at videocards.com because once again, trying to link to uh, X directly right now isn't working as of the time of filming. I'm sure it'll get sorted out, but that's where we're at. If Now he's posted specs for the 5060 Ti and the uh, 5060. I think we also had a 5050 post as well. Uh, most uh, information we have uh, is looking like this. There have been a few other sources uh, uh, leaking information about these GPUs, but Compite is le leaking more actual specs, like the CUDA core count, things like that. So it's looking like the current information is that the 5060 Ti will have 4,608 CUDA cores and the 5060 will have 3,840. I think that's like a 17% reduction. Now, 17% reduction in cores does not necessarily mean a 17% performance difference uh, because the clock speeds they're running at could be different. So if the clock speeds are different, that, that has some differences. And also, if they have the same uh, memory bandwidth, that's another factor in performance. So if that's the same, then even if you have more CUDA cores, it doesn't scale linearly, and then the, cores, the clock speeds can be different. There's still stuff we don't know here but at least core count wise looks like about a 17% fewer cores on the 5060. Now the 5060 Ti is rumored to be coming in both an eight gigabyte and a 16 gigabyte variant, like we saw with the 4060 Ti, where there was an eight gigabyte version initially, and then later on they added in a 16 gigabyte variant, although originally at a $100 higher MSRP, although that seemed too much, and they on the real market were more like $50 apart uh, as far as the actual price they were sitting at in the market. I'm hoping that this time around we get the 16 gigabyte version at a much more reasonable price because quite frankly, an eight gigabyte card, if it's anything like the, the $400 price point we had the 4060 Ti hit at last generation, that's gonna be awful. It's not that you can't play all current games on an eight gigabyte card, but there are more and more games where you have to be mindful of the VRAM capacity um, if you're on an eight gigabyte card. You can't just enable uh, uh, the highest settings. And the frustrating thing for a casual user, or honestly even some more advanced users of running out of VRAM is that it's not ob always obvious that the performance issues you're having in a game 
are related to VRAM issues. And sometimes there's not even performance issues to clue you in. Sometimes just textures look really bad because it's not loading in the high textures. So being out of VRAM is a bad situation to be in because it can be confusing. It can cause graphical issues and performance issues and not always for an obvious cause. So if they're still charging anything like $400 for an eight gigabyte card uh, in 2025, it's, it's just ridiculous. Now, if the eight gigabyte version comes in with a massive price cut, then it could still be attractive to people who mostly play competitive esports titles at reduced graphic settings. Because there are, there's a big split in, in gamers, right? Like there's a bunch of people who mostly play single player games and turn graphic settings way up. And then there's people who almost entirely play esports titles, sometimes even just one specific game. And, and you just spend thousands of hours in that game. And that's your thing. And a lot of times competitive gamers, I know when I was you know, chasing the, the top 1% on all of the leaderboards uh, in my youth, um, you turn down the graphic settings for increased visibility and higher frame rates. So in that case, you might not need more than eight gigabytes of VRAM. So it could end up being having a niche market where it makes sense, but still charging any high price for an eight gigabyte card seems a bit ridiculous. Um, in my opinion. So if this is true, we'll have to see where they price that eight gigabyte model because that's a disaster. Now, uh, the RTX 5060 does appear to be an eight gigabyte card. If this is priced around $300 like last time around, again, maybe a niche use, not even necessarily niche, but there, there is a specific use case, like I said, turn down graphic setting in esports titles where maybe you'll be just fine. But I think as just a general card for a general recommendation, that is just not enough in 2025 if this thing costs anything like the, the 4060 did at $300. Um, now there's also rumors of the 5050 coming in as an eight gigabyte card. Um, maybe this is also the probability of it being priced well, we'll see <laughs> anyway. Um, now this does appear to be a major step down in CUDA core count and also is rumored to be an eight gigabyte card. So we'll have to see what comes of it. Also it's rumored to be GDDR6 rather than GDDR7. That would at least help with pricing. Uh, so it would reduce memory bandwidth, obviously, but it would help the costs. So I'm hoping that this thing's at least gonna be aggressively priced. What's the chances of that? Again, 50-50? I don't know. Enough of that pun, let's go ahead and move on to some other NVIDIA news. How about uh, the black screen issues? So there's been wide reports of black screen issues, both on, on, on 50 series cards, as well as we were seeing some reports on people who updated to the new 50 series drivers when they launched, uh, but didn't have 50 series cards. There's been a number of attempts to fix that from Nvidia, but we're just getting another hot fix as of the eighth, uh, which is reporting 50 series GPU crashes with black screen as a fix. They're also saying that they're fixing graphics cards may not run at full speeds on system reboot when overclocked, which I didn't, hadn't even heard of as a reported issue, but it is being reported as a fix. Now remember, hot fixes are not full driver releases, so you would have to, you know, I'll link this in my video description if you're interested. And generally with hot fix drivers, they haven't passed the full WHQL uh, certification. So in other words, it's best to only install these if you're experiencing one of the issues that they're releasing a hot fix for. Otherwise, it's best to just wait for the next major driver release, which will include these hotfixes as part of you know, their, their next driver, which will also then have um, passed through the full certification and uh, all of that. Anyway, uh, let me end on one more note. Now this is AMD and FSR related, but it is also console related. So I saved it to the end. This is a little more information about the FSR4 collaboration with PlayStation's Mark Cerny giving additional information. Now, this came out of a Digital Foundry video that released today. I have not watched the whole thing. Uh, and in that video, they quickly flash some emails from Mark Cerny. They don't read them in their entirety, but they do uh, discuss some of the information. So basically, they uh, Digital Foundry asked PlayStation's Mark Cerny about more details because AMD did say that they developed FSR4 in collaboration with PlayStation as part of Project Amethyst, which I've reported on before, a research collaboration between AMD and PlayStation. 
And so Mark Cerny gave some details because FSR 4 is very much not PSSR. It's, and it, image quality wise appears to be much better than PSSR. So uh, here's his response. So he says, our target is to have something very similar to FSR 4's upscaler available on PS5 Pro for 2026 titles as the next evolution of PSSR. So again, this is confirming that PSSR is not FSR 4, um, but hoping to get a version of FSR 4 ready. It should take the same inputs and produce essentially the same outputs as FSR 4. Uh, doing the implementation is rather ambitious and time consuming, which is why you haven't already seen this new upscaler on the PS5 Pro. What they're talking about here is the fact that while the PS5 Pro's GPU has some elements of RDNA 4 in it, it is not a fully RDNA 4 GPU. So getting FSR 4 to run on a GPU that has different machine learning uh, acceleration setup is why this is rather an ambitious and time consuming process. Anyway, but he is hopeful that it'll be ready for 2026. RDNA 4 and the hardware in PS5 Pro are completely separate designs, which is why I speak in terms of re-implementation on PS5 Pro when I talk about the new upscaling network used in FSR 4. I'm definitely looking forward to a future with co-developed hardware features for machine learning that will dramatically increase interoperability. Now, this is going a little bit bigger, and there's some expansion on this down below, because remember that Project Amethyst was not just to produce FSR 4. There's a bigger research collaboration between AMD and PlayStation, and focuses heavily on convolutional neural networks being used for gaming applications. And that's interesting, because again, they're talking more about shorter term goals to co-develop neural network architectures and training strategies for game graphics. The longer term goal is to work together to create a more ideal hardware architecture for machine learning, something capable of processing the neural networks needed for game graphics at high speed. So in other words, what they're hinting at is the PS6, for example, uh, again, probably will have AMD hardware, and this collaboration is really being designed, I think, to get ready for that. They're both trying to develop uh, neural networks for gaming applications, and make sure that they're developing the right hardware to run that on. And to run on a console, this needs to be pretty, um, uh, pretty, you know, uh, cost efficient. So they're still working on that, right? So the PS5 is a step in that direction. It's a learning experience, but uh, it's going to be really interesting to see where they go with this because obviously the most, uh, the mo the, obviously the most obvious <laughs> uh, application of neural networks for gaming is the upscaling technology, AI upscaling, and FSR 4 really seems to be paying off with that. But there could be other neural rendering techniques. NVIDIA has already been showing some of those off at CES, but they haven't really made their way into actual games yet. AMD seems to be heading in that same direction in this collaboration with PlayStation. And what's really interesting is with this tight of a collaboration, uh, you know, when we get the PS6, if this stuff is all in place, there could be a library of neural rendering techniques that runs on PlayStation 6 hardware that should also be compatible on uh, AMD hardware, at least of that generation, whether or not RDNA 4, uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but the point is, game development generally targets consoles as like the base game design. And then some games, you know, push PC pretty pretty far beyond that. We've seen that a lot with NVIDIA's techniques of path tracing modes, ray reconstruction, and all of that. But that's usually game developers building something additional on top of their original game design, and often with a lot of assistance from NVIDIA to make that happen. Uh, the advantage I think AMD has here is if the next generation of consoles running on AMD hardware uh, have neural networks for neural rendering that's just part of the base game design, it wouldn't mean that it's ne needing to be kind of tacked on on top of that with an additional um, game development budget and time and all of that. This seems like it could pay off. It seems really interesting. But again, we have yet to see the full payoff for this. And I doubt we will until we're into like PS6 generation. But FSR 4 is already looking really good and came out of this. So that's pretty cool. All right, that's what uh, news I've got for you today. Hope you found this useful and or interesting. Remember the sources for all of the uh, OptiScaler stuff, as well as the news topics I talked about today, will be linked in the video description, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.